xong mình chơi những cái chỗ ông nhầm đây bậc cả to cái chậm đại ca để tiếp thì xã mật ca hay một lần chun về đây này đào từ lục thầy chắc rong làm bài bật to sầm nô đào này chậm nín nhầm bậc thiên ông nhầm đây xong nhầm lực đào lục thầy chắc rong thà đời xa cà pra sầm nô chỉ về xã ông lý hay này chậm nín của xã đáp ban được về xã ông lý ní cứ miền cà trả lời phim đời cả bộ phim mình toàn điệp chậm mà mình toàn oh những sum miền cà độ khlie mình tách rồi viên cà mình to sum nuo tiết rồi co nẹt chậm niên để bị để đập hơi những cứ sum miền cà phần dứt mình tách để mày tục ở cả ở hàng nẹt bộ phim phía xa ai bộ phim phía xa toàn tiền cà sú tiền cà trả lời và tôi xin chào chúng ta đã theo dõi lúc này và chúng ta sẽ bắt đầu xâm nụ cho bộ nạn chúng ta sẽ bắt đầu xâm nụ Before the adjournment we were discussing the black paper a document of the democratic government published in September of 1978. In your book, Brother Enemy, you refer to that document at page 196-0019-381-381. About halfway down that page, you said, curiously enough, in its official indictment against Vietnam, the Black Book, published by the Pol Pot regime in September 1978, makes no mention of the October 1977 attack by the Vietnamese. I want you to comment on your term the official indictment against Vietnam. Why did you draw that conclusion? I was surprised that Black Book is, in fact, a presentation of the Khmer Rouge case against Vietnam. All the terrible things have done. And it would have been logical for the Khmer Rouge mentioned that there was an attempt to um, assassinate a Pol Pot or that there were um, plans for uprising that Vietnamese may have been involved. But not mentioning that, that was curious, and my speculation would be that they did not want again to demoralize the population by mentioning such attempt by people from within the party. So uh, that was the reason perhaps why those efforts to unseat Pol Pot in that period Thank you. 
at uh, chapter 6 no, of the black paper 0008254 the author or authors describe events from April 17 1975 to the first semester of 1977 in the first part of that chapter, the black paper comments on the liberation of uh, South Vietnam on the 30th of April 1975, at which point the Communist Party of Kampuchea asked the Vietnamese to withdraw by the latest at the end of June 1975. The author of the black paper goes on to say that the Vietnamese remained in Vietnam, Cambodian territory and says quote by keeping its forces to stay in Kampuchea's territory Vietnam wanted to control Kampuchea the party and Kampuchea's people and to organize the people in order to create difficulties for Kampuchea's revolution. It also wanted to create bases for its future aggression. Is that a, uh, an analysis which you would be able to comment on? I believe that this uh, analysis is a somewhat amalgamation of events over a period, not necessarily of the early uh, months or weeks of 1975, because from what I recall, the Vietnamese were angry at the Khmer takeover of Phu Quoc and Tho Chu Islands. In April May 75, and they counterattacked and took a Cambodian island away, which they held on for some weeks. And that is the only thing I can remember the Vietnamese were in occupation of in the first um, months of the victory in Vietnam and in Cambodia. But in 1977 78 period, uh, Vietnamese army did enter Cambodia and in fact did maintain their presence inside Cambodia up to 15 20 months inside and kind of buffer from the Khmer Rouge attack against Vietnam Vietnamese so it seems to me that this is, there is a, um, either deliberate or sort of confusion of memory as to when the Vietnamese were inside Cambodia um, after the initial attacks. And at the same page, uh, in the black paper, the author describes border attacks by the Vietnamese continuously launched 
against the revolutionary army of Campuchia and Vietnamese's, Vietnam's unceasingly provoked incident. It further describes how Vietnam sent its nationals to settle in Campuchia's territory along the borders. And concludes, quote, Thus, the Vietnamese attacked Campuchia immediately after the day, immediately the day after her liberation, unquote. Do these comments suggest to you that uh, between May 1975 and January 1978, at least, that Democratic Campuchia considered aggression by the Vietnamese to be more or less continuous. Um, it seems to me that uh, this was a post-factor justification of their own attacks because from what I have witnessed and what I have read, um, the Vietnamese were extremely careful in not provoking the Khmer Rouge, accepting that occupation of the island away. Until the middle of 1977. In fact, the first indication that the Vietnamese are not going to be tolerating that continuous Khmer Rouge nibbling attacks along the border was when in July of 1977, Vietnamese Defense Minister Nguyen Nguyen was sent to inspect the Cambodian border and more importantly, that visit which would have been kept confidential was actually reported by the Vietnamese media as a kind of warning to the that we are not going to be tolerating what you have been doing. So I have um, no reasons to believe that the Vietnamese were engaging in this kind of attack that the passage you Thank you. Are you familiar with the report in Far Eastern Relations of a speech given by Pol Pot, the Secretary of the Central Committee at a 17 January 1978 mass meeting on the 10th anniversary of the Cambodian Revolutionary Army. This is a report of the speech dated 19 January 19. 78. Uh, its reference is uh, document 17.2, introductory submission, English 00008671, Khmer 00224837. Zero zero two two four eight five two. 
that does not appear to be a French translation. Are you familiar with the, that speech or the report of that speech? Or do you recall it as part of your research for your book? I am uh, absolutely sure that I had read that, but at this point I do not recall what the content would In that speech, whole part is reported as saying on the 17th of January 1978, since May 1975, these Vietnamese border Defense Security Units have provoked countless incidents along the border from Kampot to Ratanakiri. That again uh, implies, does it not, that in the view of democratic Kampuchea, there was constant aggression by the Vietnamese on the Cambodians. As I said uh, before, I think the Vietnamese attack on Cambodia um, really began in 1977. Until that point, the two Cambodian attacks which shook the Vietnamese. One was April 30th, 1977. April 30th um, happened to be the anniversary of the fall of liberation of Saigon. And that was the day when everybody was in a festive mood and no security was um, present, and that was the day when the Khmer attacked and brutally killed many civilians. And the second attack, which was again um, very, very um, brutal, was on 27th September, which happened to be like April 30th, a Saturday. And apparently the Vietnamese military officers, they go off the weekend, and so Saturday was again chosen by the Khmer Rouge to launch these attacks. And those attacks, plus the information that the Vietnamese had about Chinese military aid beginning to arrive in Cambodia made them more concerned that this is not a case of Khmer's acting somewhat irrationally in attacking uh, villages along the border. It may be part of a bigger plan in which uh, Chinese are involved. And so um, that was when I think General Giap's visit took place and the Vietnamese uh, Politburo uh, met several times to decide the course of action vis-à-vis Cambodia. Thank you. During the period of the democratic Kampuchean regime, there were a number of media reports concerning the disputes between Vietnam and Cambodia, were there not? Yes, there were. So the international community was relatively well informed of the situation between the two countries. Uh, I wouldn't say well informed, but because for a variety of reasons, which is perhaps um, it took too much of a detail to go into, both the Vietnamese and Cambodians um, kept many of their conflicts and uh, attacks secret for a long time. So uh, people like me who are trying to figure out what is going on, we were doing kind of tea leaf reading by analyzing the broadcast from Radio Nom Pan and seeing a particular use of a word, what does it mean, why is it being said, perhaps something going on. So, so the lot of 
understanding or suspicion of what is going on between Vietnam and Cambodia was based on inferences read from official statements rather than actual revelation of what was going on. Thank you. And in addition to that type of statement, uh, there were um, investigations done based presumably on intelligence by countries such as the United States of America. Is that correct? Yes. Are you familiar with a report uh, prepared at the request of the Subcommittee on Asian and Pacific Affairs uh, on the 4th of October 1978 for the benefit of the Congress of the United States? Uh, I'll first read out its ERN numbers, which are D84 slash 14 English 00187375 to 00187375. Does not appear to be a translation in in this uh, report, what is described as the Vietnam-Cambodia border war is summarized, and I will briefly go through the congressional summary as it understood it as at uh, October of 1978. First, following the victory for communism in Indochina in April and May 1975, the report speaks of a series of land and island grabs by both Vietnamese and Cambodians. Then, in August 1975, increased Cambodian incursions into Vietnam. Then, in December 1975, the Cambodians, according to the Vietnamese, engage in a series of border skirmishes in the highland provinces of Kantum and Da Lac. And according to the Vietnamese, according to the Cambodians, the Vietnamese attempt to sponsor a coup d'etat against the Cambodian government, which attempt failed. In, on April 30, 1977, after what the report describes as one year of relative quiet, according to Vietnam, Cambodian, Cambodia sends division-sized forces into Ha Tien, Cha Doc region. Then, in September, in the summer, rather, of 1977, uh, there are attempts to um, mediate, but in September of that year, Vietnam launches systematic 
and extensive attack into Cambodia, described as shallow attack, less than 10 miles penetration for the most part. Then in on the 25th of December 1977, the Cambodians go public with the war. And in April, uh, in January of 1978, Vietnamese military forces invade and take some 400 square miles of Cambodian territory. In April, of that year, border clashes continued through late winter and into early spring. Uh, in June of 1978, Hanoi reports a new series of border incidents in the and Kontum regions. Uh, of course, this report is prepared prior to the final incursion by the Vietnamese. That brief summary by the, uh, for the U.S. Congress, does it coincide with your understanding of the uh, disputes between the two countries over that period? Yes, it does. When I said earlier, the two major attacks, the April 30th, that is that in the and the second attack was in September. The Khmer Rouge, um, publicly denouncing in December 31st, 1977, actually followed the Vietnamese massive Vietnamese mission, which uh, took place on December 24th. So that was the immediate context for the Khmer Rouge declaration of uh, relationship. Thank you. Now, there were a large number of international news reports, uh, most of them emanating from newspapers in the United States, uh, and I'm going to put just a small number to you to see if you uh, either recall the report or the incident being reported. Zero, zero, one, six, five, Nine four three uh, from the New York Times on the 29th of April 1975, uh, reporting on the new Cambodian government's notice served apparently aimed at North Vietnam, that no foreign military bases would be tolerated in Cambodia. Do you, does that accord with your uh, knowledge of around that period? Uh, Your Honor, it doesn't because uh, 29th April was the day before Saigon fell to the Communist forces, and I was busy with something else. And then, um, on the 14th of June 1975, uh, Associated Press report in the New York Times, recording that on the 13th of June, Polo Y, uh, an island off the coast of Cambodia was captured 
by Vietnamese troops. That, of course, accords with the testimony that you have already given. Then, um, on the 21st, uh, I'm sorry, that ERN number was 00165960. Then on the 21st of June 1975, a report the New York Times again, 00165962, noting North and South Vietnamese military forces fighting battles with Cambodian communists in Cambodia, and noting that the Cambodian fighting took place in border regions and could have been caused by centuries-old frontier disputes or by North Vietnam's refusal to withdraw troops from sanctuaries established during the Vietnam War. Does that accord with your recollection from that period? Um, no, it doesn't. Because immediately after the communist victory in Vietnam, um, they were dealing with the flow of Vietnamese residents from Cambodia who were expelled from Cam Cambodia and, uh, basically accommodating them providing protection to those people I think were the most important task in the initial weeks after the communist Vietnam and I have difficulty imagining that Vietnamese could have maintained their Vietnam military bases inside Cambodia after 1973. If one might digress a little bit in the past, Vietnamese, uh, Cambodian cooperation was pretty intense in 1971. There were major operations that the Vietnamese mounted Yes. And, um, so the and since 73, Vietnam uh, presence were uh, 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 by the Khmer Rouge. So you disagree to some extent with this report, which I should note says in its body uh, is based on information that comes from thoroughly reliable sources and from Americans who are still in the area. Yes, I, I'm, uh, as a reporter, I'm familiar with some reliable sources. Uh, then the Washington Post uh, on the 26th of September 1977, ERN number 0016-6297 records uh, clashes on the Vietnamese border have been fierce and involved aircraft and artillery. Uh, and moreover, uh, mentions other battles concerning Thailand and uh, 
summarizes to some degree the dispute at this stage concerning boundaries uh, democratic Kampuchea uh, borders. So again, as a summary, would you have any disagreement with that very brief analysis? Uh, no, I, I won't, because as I mentioned earlier, this major attack on September 24th, uh, uh, to correct the record, I think in the past I mentioned September 27th, it was September 24th, 1977, that was the major attack. Uh, although this attack at the time was not reported by the Vietnamese on the uh, then uh, a report in the New York Times, uh, 31st December 1977, 001. Six six zero one zero zone recording the uh, statement by Cambodia severing diplomatic relationships with Hanoi because of border fighting. Does that accord with your recollection from that period? Uh, I do not recall reading the New York Times, but this was uh, a major mystery all over the world because this was the first time that the Phnom Penh Radio has actually uh, announced Vietnam Open and uh, announced the break of relations. In the Los Angeles Times, on the 16th of January, 1978, there is a report with the headline, Cambodians counterattack into Vietnam, 00 uh, this report mentions the incursion by Cambodian troops into Ha Tien and the Vietnamese invasion force and goes on to say the Cambodian commanders are under orders to attack the Vietnamese wherever they are vulnerable and to take no prisoners according to sources. Some prisoners, the report says, are known to have been executed. Does this report accord with your knowledge of the situation in January of 1978. Uh, I have no specific uh, information about that particular uh, attack that the New York Times report mentions, nor of the orders about not taking any prisoners. But generally, uh, judging by what has happened in the past and since then, uh, it seems to be the Khmer Rouge policy of uh, not taking prisoners on this. The prisoners of certain value for the Khmer Rouge policy. And in the final of, in the final of my very small selection of news reports, from the Washington Post. Post. No, in fact, from Los Angeles, Times, Los Angeles Times, December the 4th, 1978, a report headlined Vietnam Offensive reportedly starts in northeast Cambodia. 
Does that accord with your recollection of the, uh, what was occurring at that time? Um, it's specifically, no, because I uh, uh, do not recall in particular attack in December, because my reading of the situation then was that the High Command decided to launch their invasion of Cambodia on January 1st, 1979. But that date had to be pushed forward when the Khmer Rouge uh, launched a on 20th and 21st December of 1978. That led the Vietnamese authorities to move forward their invasion date, and they launched the attack on Cambodia on December 23rd December. So that was the attack which ended up coming to mind. This this report refers to a strong drive by Vietnamese forces on December the 4th to cut off Cambodia's vast northeast provinces and provide a liberated zone for the new Cambodian Communist Front. And according to authoritative sources, was announced with great fanfare in Hanoi on the preceding Sunday. Do you have any comments? Yeah, that report is correct. Uh, indeed, on December 2nd, 1978. Uh, according to the Vietnamese reports, I don't know any independent journalist uh, present uh, there. Vietnamese media reported uh, that in Kachi province, um, there was a resistance, Cambodian resistance organization called United Front for National Salvation of Kampuchea was launched and the and it was headed by Heng Samrin, who was the president of the People's Republic of Thank you. Now, at a certain point, uh, it's already clear that Democratic Kampuchea broke off diplomatic relations uh, with Vietnam, uh, and um, you in fact uh, refer to this in your book. At um, ERN 00192392 of the severing of diplomatic relationships. And in fact, there is a um, 
copy of the statement itself in English, in Khmer, zero and in French, zero zero Reading from the statement itself, the Foreign Ministry of Democratic Kampuchea on 31 December 1977 is reported as saying first that the government of democratic Cambodia decides to temporarily sever diplomatic relationships with Vietnam, as from that date, until the aggressor forces of Vietnam withdraw from the sacred territory of democratic Cambodia, and until the friendly atmosphere between the countries is restored. Uh, and secondly, the diplomats and embassy personnel of Vietnam accredited to Vietnam. Democratic Cambodia are given a deadline for leaving Vietnam. Was this the first time that there was an open statement of the policy of democratic Kampuchea in relation to its relationship with Vietnam? It is uh, my belief that that was the first time a uh, clear statement was made in announcing Vietnam, announcing the of Vietnam, relationship, at least suspension of Vietnam. And of course, uh, approximately one year later, the Vietnamese began their major and final attack on democratic Kampuchea. Is that correct? Yes, Your During the period of that major attack, did democratic Kampuchea take any steps to seek a diplomatic resolution with Vietnam? I don't believe so. Were you aware of a telegram dated 3 January 1979 from the Deputy Prime Minister Yang who was then in charge of foreign affairs to the President of the Security Council asking for its assistance? Uh, I might have known about it, but I do not recall it at this point. That ERN number is D60-0002. Khmer 
to zero zero two seven two zero four. Between the date when democratic Kampuchea severed diplomatic relationships with Vietnam in December of 1977 and the uh, final uh, incursion by Vietnam one year later. Do you know of any other attempts to invoke the assistance of the United Nations or any other diplomatic resolution of the dispute between the two countries? I do not recall uh, any, anything that would have more than pro forma that would have caught the attention of the media. Because uh, there had been an attempt in the past to negotiate directly with Vietnam, which had not produced any results. And uh, my hunch would be that those uh, the January 3rd letter or any <coughs> other communication that <coughs> have been sent to the event later on was essentially for the record, not to be taken seriously. Thank you. 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 Now, of course, in your book, Brother Enri, you discuss the capture of Cambodian territory from the east, culminating in the capture of Phnom Penh by the Vietnamese in January of 1979. The accused does not dispute the fact of the uh, severing of diplomatic relationships culminating in the incursion by the Vietnamese and the capture of Phnom Penh. But for the sake of completeness, could you give us a very brief outline of the events that culminated on the 6th of January? 1979, from your research. I have uh, talked to um, a whole bunch of people, uh, Vietnamese, Khmer, Vietnam, Khmer, foreigners who were knowledgeable about the events at the time and try to reconstruct what happened in the period of January 67 uh, in Long Pei. And, uh, and I, uh, what um, I had not um, written in my book because I was unaware of the time, I had not learned to read it at all. The Khmer Rouge resistance was pretty ferocious. I don't think they expected that outnumbered Khmer Rouge to fight so ferociously. And that I had perhaps written in my book and others thought so that the Vietnamese went to Cambodia like a uh, knife in butter. That was not Vietnam the case. Vietnam had to fight very hard, and they used uh, uh, artillery tank and aircraft. And, the, and, and, and I suppose because of that, by uh, the Phnom Penh was not evacuated till the last minute. I think there was an expectation that the Vietnamese would not be able to take the place. So from what I gathered that uh, Pol Pot left in the morning of the 7th. So the evacuation order was given only on the 6th. 
ໃນថ្ងៃទី Monsieur l'expert, tout à l'heure, vous nous avez parlé un petit peu du contexte euh, qui précédait la période qui nous concerne. Vous avez parlé notamment des relations qui ont pu exister au début des années 70 entre l'armée des forces communistes vietnamiennes et l'armée Khmer Rouge. de dire les choses simplement. Vous nous avez dit que en 1971, notamment, il y avait eu de grandes actions effectuées de façon concertée. Et puis, vous avez fait état d'un changement à partir de l'année 1973. Est-ce que vous pourriez nous dire Selon vous, selon les informations qui sont parvenues à votre connaissance, pour quelles, quelles étaient les raisons de ce changement Est-ce que s'il y a eu un départ des forces euh, communistes vietnamiennes, est-ce que ce départ s'est fait de façon euh, aisée ou est-ce que, au contraire, cela a suscité des difficultés est-ce que, euh, mais je crois que vous avez déjà répondu, selon vous, en 1975, il subsistait encore des forces armées communistes vietnamiennes sur le sol cambodgien movement and the Khmer communist movement has a long history of cooperation and conflict. In the, in the, the two periods when there was very close cooperation, one was um, prior to the 1970 coup d'etat against the and then immediately after that, the Vietnamese forces came in in a large number inside Cambodia and fought the Lonmal regime which had overthrown Prince Sihanouk. And the two major operations launched by Lonmal regime, Operation Chenla 1 and Chenla 2, these were defeated. Uh, thoroughly by the Vietnamese forces inside Cambodia. And after those attacks, Lonol was actually on the defensive. And in the meanwhile, on the international front, Vietnam was negotiating with the United States for the end of the war. And the Paris peace talks which are going on um, in that Paris peace talks, the United States wanted Vietnam to bring the Cambodians to the table. 
ហើយមិនមានមូលហេតុណាមួយ Vietnam's relations with Cambodia really went downhill from that point. So, and that is why I have difficulty believing that after the uh, breakdown in the 72-73 period, there could have been any Vietnamese military presence inside Cambodia, which is significant. There could have been perhaps small groups or presence, but an official Vietnamese military presence in Cambodia in 75 uh, unthinkable. And another point I must mention is that the Khmer Rouge anger at the Vietnamese was because once Paris Peace Talks concluded the war with Vietnam, American Air Force turned its might against Cambodia. And in the first five and a half months of 1973, Cambodia suffered massive bombing by the Vietnamese Americans. And the Khmer Rouge held Vietnam responsible for those attacks because they signed a separate peace deal with the United States and left Cambodia to face the brunt of the USA. Donc, ce, ce que vous nous dites, c'est que à ce moment-là, les relations entre les deux forces communistes du Vietnam et du Cambodge étaient particulièrement, on peut dire, détériorées, euh, tendues. Euh, vous avez fait état de cadres vietnamiens tués ou d'autres expulsés. Est-ce que vous avez euh, des sources particulières sur lesquelles vous appuyez pour euh, nous donner ces indications ou est-ce que euh, ce sont simplement des choses que vous avez entendu dire When, uh, when such uh, events occurred in 72, I was not based in the region. I was then living in Paris. And so what I said was the result of my research interviews with, uh, again, Cambodians and Vietnamese who had uh, experienced whose relations and friends have been killed. So I have no reason to doubt about those incidents uh, involving Vietnamese in Cambodia in 72 that I heard much later. Tout 
toujours par rapport au contexte du conflit armé. Il a été question tout à l'heure du livre noir. Et, me semble-t-il, mais peut-être ai-je mal compris, vous avez indiqué que ce livre noir euh, contenait certaines analyses que vous avez, me semble-t-il, qualifiées de racistes. Est-ce que de... Euh, des idées similaires à celles contenues dans le livre noir existaient antérieurement à la période du Kampucha démocratique. Est-ce que vous avez connaissance d'événements qui seraient susceptibles de recevoir éventuellement des qualifications de même nature Historically, historically, Vietnam and Cambodia had, had a pretty um, tormented relationship, especially in the 19th century, when the Nguyen dynasty actually occupied Cambodia for a period and tried to impose Vietnamese culture, language, on the Khmers. So that is part of the folk memory. Cambodians recall the period when the Vietnamese uh, were the masters of Cambodians. And there is many sort of folk sto stories that we talk about to explain the Vietnamese cruelty towards the Khmers. So there is uh, no question in my mind that there is a sense which you can call racist, but which is a Khmer sense of the Vietnamese being uh, aggressor, expansionist, and brutal. And that was the common sort of perception of the Vietnamese. So in that context, I am not surprised that the Khmer Rouge picked it up and gave it perhaps a somewhat more intellectual um, um, heft. If I may, uh, you may uh, read just one short passage from the Black Book. It says, whether in the feudalist era, in the French colonialist period, in the U.S. imperialist period, or in the Ho Chi Minh period, the Vietnamese have not changed their true nature. That is the nature of the aggressor, an exceptionist, and swallower of other countries' territories. So here, the Vietnamese, is being characterized as the aggressor. So that was the reason why I thought it was racist. ឥឡូវដល់ម៉ោងត្រូវសម្រាក់ពិសាហ្នឹងឲ្យត្រង់ឡូវដល់ម៉ោងមួយនិងសាមសម្ពទីរសៀលទៅបន្តដំណើរការ